Hi, everyone. I think this is the last talk. Uh, well, basically, this, these are the last sessions of the day. So how are the energy levels of the room? <laughs> five, five, great. Yeah, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. So thanks all, by the way, for joining us for this talk today. We're going to talk about running Ubuntu desktop on ARM-based laptops. And we have a bit of a teaser uh, in the end. Oh, sorry, I should. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for mentioning that. I should hold it. Hold the mic closer. Uh, my name is Gordon. And I'm working for Canonical for two years now. Uh, but I am actually, um, I started as a Linux developer in my career. So I actually have some contributions to upstream. Uh, but the folks at Canonical, the engineers, they don't let me touch the code anymore. So uh, I'm kind of here giving this presentation because usually I'll, we also have a partner in mind who would present instead of me, but they were not able to be here. So in the end, I'll show you a bit of a demo video that will tell us a bit more about our next steps in the ecosystem. But let's first also check about who we have in the room right now. Who has ever compiled Linux for an ARM-based device? Show of hands. Wow, I think that's roughly, I would say, 50, over 50%, let's say. You're all quite brave when you have done that. So how was the experience? What did, what did you feel like with cross-compilation? How did you experience that? So so, it was great. <laughs> so it's like a, it's like a big feeling. It's like a big feeling. Right. right. So we have a, a lot of different opinions on how this went, uh, and in general, the Linux on ARM is definitely not a new thing, right? Especially the ARM as a company and the whole ecosystem has been working quite a lot since forever already to get Linux on ARM-based devices. Uh, similarly to that, how long has been Ubuntu present on ARM-based devices? Does anybody know an answer to that question? So I did a bit of research, and we have a blog post here from Victor. It appears that in October of 2011, so basically that was for the 11.10 release, Ubuntu on ARM has been started to experiment more and more. Of course, there was some pre-work being done, as mentioned here, but this is kind of like a rough start when Ubuntu is getting more and more adopted on ARM-based devices. This is also about the same time when the first research has been started to build ARM-based servers. Uh, if you want to know more about the history of Linux on ARM and what is currently happening with the ecosystem, we had a talk last year from Robbie Williamson, uh, who was talking exactly about this topic and about Ubuntu on ARM and the work ARM does to make Linux perfect on ARM, basically. But I'm not going to talk more about that because you can check Robbie's talk for that. What I want to talk about today is running Linux desktop on ARM laptops. So I'm wondering, does anybody in the room have an ARM-based laptop? All right, wow. That's, I'm very impressed. I'm impressed, I have to say. <laughs> All right, that's okay. Mac still counts. It still counts, right? It's still an ARM based device. So, we saw in the recent history that there's a huge proliferation of ARM based laptops, starting from different vendors uh, in the Mac ecosystem, but also in the Windows ecosystem, right? But at the same time, there have been a lot of attempts that you saw in the community of folks who are trying actually to use Linux on an ARM-based laptop, right? And basically why I asked you about the experience of building Linux on ARM or for ARM, how did you experience that? I think that's for me personally, I have a few reasons why I think that Linux desktop on ARM laptops is a really great value proposition. For me, the first one is native development on ARM. I think that's great. Those are the pain points I experienced when I was a developer and especially battery life is yet another point that is a huge value proposition for them. And in the end, we have also performance. Uh, is there anything else that I might have forgotten among these points? Cooling. Cooling, yeah. Cooling was mentioned as well. So definitely that's one of those. And basically uh, what has been done is, as I mentioned, there was a lot of new platforms that were coming out on the market. One interesting one, was the Lenovo X13S laptop that featured the Qualcomm Snapdragon chip, essentially. And what we saw is that the first patches that were posted upstream were targeting Linux 520. 
basic, but these were the first initial patches. This was the basic support, kind of like the device tree, just explaining like what the SOC is and so on. So not much support, but you could boot to, to shell, let's say that way. Uh, when we saw that and discussed with our partners in the ecosystem, Lenovo, Arm, and the others, as well as Qualcomm, we came to understand, hey, there might be demand for hobbyists and to make the community aware of, hey, what, it, what would it be like to run Linux or specifically Ubuntu on this type of devices? So then our team uh, started working on that as a concept project, essentially. And we have a lot of these members here in the room today. Uh, and uh, basically, we started also this in earlier than that, actually. But this is the first time when the community actually saw those efforts publicly because we kind of mentioned it really in a lukewarm way because we weren't really sure about the stability of the system. It had a lot of missing things, so we named it as a concept thing. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you look at really what our team has been doing here, and specifically I would like to call out Jörg, Heinrich, and Dimitri, who is sitting here also, uh, how we started with this journey. So we started with something that we called as a concept image that we built for Ubuntu 22.10. It wasn't released in October 2010, but it was targeting 2010. Uh, and we call that the concept image. So it was like the first thing. It was quite wobbly and the installation experience was not that awesome, to be honest. There was a lot of manual work we needed to do to make it work. And basically based on that feedback, our partners also took that on board, fixed a bit the firmware, fixed a bit things in the kernel. And by the time we had Ubuntu 23.04 with the kernel 6.2, things start to look up more and more, right? And we were quite excited, and but we were still kind of, oh, not really 100% sure how far we would actually get with enabling this device. And what happened with 2310 is actually that we got now a build and release image that is hosted on CD images at ubuntu.com. And you can see here the request that was made by Dimitri towards our archive team to actually make that happen and package that I saw out there. So thanks a lot for that. And this is now the moment where you can actually download that image. And if you have an X13S, it's going to be really a really seamless installation experience. So you no longer have to go through all the things that were described previously in the concept, right? So this is going to be great. Additionally, there's going to be other things that we would like to highlight that work quite well, which is it's easily solvable, right? GPU acceleration, it works. Connectivity works. Fingerprint scanner, it works. And the touch screen works. What is still a work in progress? Mobile. Uh, modem works as well for and 5G. Thanks a lot. Like the mobile modem works as well, which some versions of the laptop have, some versions don't, depending on which one you got. Uh, the ones that are work in progress still are power management. I think it works pretty well. The deep sleep might be flaky sometimes. Secure boot is still something that is required, and the camera needs more work. Uh, but that's still something that gives us an opportunity to improve on this, right? Uh, so. After that, I have a slide that kind of points you where you can download actually the image for X13S, but since I gave you a link, you can always come to us and we will point you to the right link and it's also gonna be embedded in the presentation itself. Uh, I would like to thank everyone from the community and our partners for contributing to this effort, right? Because it wasn't a single effort just by Canonical and all the people that I mentioned before, but it was also our partners from ARM, from Qualcomm, from Lenovo. They all contributed in making this happen. And we see an excitement in the community, on Reddit, and in other places about folks wanting to run Linux on this laptop. But actually, one of the things that you might ask us, like, what, what is next? Like, okay, we've done this work on a laptop that's currently or out on the market for quite some time, right? But what's going to happen in the next generations and so on? So uh, we would, would, as I mentioned, we would usually have a partner here presenting, but since they're not able to make it here, uh, I'm gonna show a video that we recorded of a demo. So let's go to the video. And see, oh, let's see if the video, oh, you're right, yeah, the videos, we just need to have the audio sync like this. Well, all right. Uh, right? Yeah. Sorry. Sure, no problems. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Imagine uh, imagine that screen that has, like, when the TV goes off because of technical issues. <laughs> Let's hear it from our partners about what's next.
Hi, my name is Harshad Bhutada, Director of Engineering with Qualcomm Innovation Center. Qualcomm recently announced Snapdragon X series. It offers a unique set of advantage, such as game-changing performance and mobility for developers. The Qualcomm Orion CPU is designed from ground up to deliver top-tier performance at extremely low power. It excels in both single-threaded and multi-threaded tasks. It is faster than the leading x86 CPU and matches peak performance at 70% less power. It is also faster than leading ARM-compatible competitor in single-threaded CPU performance and matches competitive peak performance with 30% less power. For more information on single-threaded and multi-threaded performance, please see the Snapdragon Summit announcements or visit Qualcomm.com. In addition to CPU performance, Snapdragon X series also leads the AI revolution with on-device neural processing unit, providing approximately 45 tops. Top-tier CPU, GPU, NPU, PCIe Gen 4 support, integrated USB 4, always-on connectivity with Wi-Fi 7, 4G, 5G, and more, the Snapdragon X series will provide performance and mobility that will enable developers to run multiple development tools, debuggers, and emulators concurrently. We will be busy collaborating with ecosystem partners like Canonical to bring this performance to your Ubuntu devices. Here, you can see Ubuntu bring up on Snapdragon X series. Initial set of patches that enable boot to shell are already posted. We will be adding support for more functionality in the upstream kernel in the coming weeks and months. Now that we have Ubuntu up and running, let's see some basic apps running. You can see System Monitor and some open source apps like LibreOffice running seamlessly. You can also see web browsing and video streaming playback in 1440p resolution. Switching to some resource incentive applications, you can see image editing software running flawlessly on the platform. Stay tuned for more information on performance benchmarks. As we mentioned before, Initial set of patches are posted publicly available at the link on the screen. For more information, please visit Qualcomm.com. Great job, Harshad. That was an awesome demo. So yeah, as you might see, we are early collaborating with our partners in the ecosystem to make sure that we have better support for Linux-based laptops in the future with Ubuntu. So I think that's all for my side. And uh, any questions? When will Lenovo have the spring installed? Uh, when will the question was when will Lenovo have this pre-installed? Uh, you're mentioning about the Lenovo X13S yeah. laptop. Yeah. I believe this might not uh, ever happen because the laptop has already been in the market for a while but never say never and this might change but i don't believe this will ever ever come as a pre-installed option on the x13s the next generation one that's still something that is open but uh yeah we'll still have to see about that question in the back uh oh yeah let me uh, could you please pass the microphone How many images are we going to have to support? Will every laptop get its own installation image? Will we have 10, 15, 1,000 of these? All right. Uh, so the question was, how many images will we have to support? Would it be per laptop? Is that, is that my understanding right? Correct. Right. 
Uh, so I can give the edge to Dimitri because I think he's the expert on this. So X30NS, the only difference in the image is just the kernel and everything else is Ubuntu generic, the same packages that you have uh, on ARM64 architecture. The plan for Noble is that X30NS will be supported by just generic, so it will be just the one ISO. Um, Future platforms may require different kernel for a period of time, but the plan is to have equivalent experience of Ubuntu and any other architecture that the one ISO supports all of them. Okay, and uh, how many users need to be checking in on our servers for a specific kernel image to keep that kernel support alive? Ooh. I don't believe we have any user stats because we don't call home. I think it's kind of ask if you continue supporting it without the minimum. Yeah. Well, uh, we are at the forefront, so right now we will support this because this is the future. <laughs> How do you add other similar platforms to this, like Asahi? Uh, no comment on that. I believe that this is something that. Uh, no, no, we, I think that we, we will not. Uh, they need more development work upstream, basically. Yes, I think more development is required upstream. Question over there. Is, is there any future work or plans to get a more standardized interface between ARM hardware and the OS? Like we have on x86 to make future new laptops easier to support? Yes, I think that the answer to that is that ARM is working a lot on standardizing their boot architecture and secure element architecture and with the standards like system ready. So that's one of the points. And the other points is if you're using, let's say, Linux standardized interfaces for multimedia, camera, and graphics, and by upstreaming your drivers, then it becomes standardized like it is an x86, right? But we all know that the ARM ecosystem is a, is a bit more fragmented. But there is work not only in the desktop space, but also in the embedded space that is improving that over time. So yes, the key goal is that it will converge to having a similar type of experience. Mm -hmm. Question? No. Technical question. You said uh, it is future. What about risk five? Isn't the risk five future? Well, that's good that you asked that. We also have a talk tomorrow uh, about Risk Five that we're going to discuss what is happening with the ecosystem there. And I believe that in, the key message is that Ubuntu was always on the forefront of being a multi-arch distro, and we definitely want to treat every single architecture as a first-class citizen, and we'll do that over time. Thank you. Question in the back. Um. <clears throat> We spoke to Mark Pearson, I think you might know from Lenovo a while ago. Um, is there any update on the webcam on the X13S? That might make you pull a face, I know, but is there any change? So uh, I, I can give also an answer, but yeah, I think Dimitri and Stefan here, they are our team members, they, they also know this best. I think that right now, we've also been in discussion with Lenovo and they're quite supportive, but we have no update on the camera still. So this is still one open point that May might get resolved in the future. I hear that Windows does support virtualization on that hardware. Is there going to be any update on that for Linux? <laughs> Yet another tricky question. I cannot uh, comment yeah. on that, right? I think it might, we will have to check that for the future generations, right? I don't think that uh, in this one, a lot of work will be invested into enabling some of those functionalities. So it might be possible in the new one you showed? Right. Awesome. Any other questions? No? So if that's it, uh, thank you everyone for joining me today. And have a nice uh, networking session, or actually, how is it called? Mixer. Mixer. Have a nice mixer, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>